This belief that Jesus would return soon, and that's really the context that St. Paul encouraged his church members in Corinth so that they would not make any major life decisions. Among those, of course, were marriage and projecting your life into having a family and children. His instruction is really more about preparing for the parousia, the coming of the end time, than about foregoing this or that state of life. But it became the basis for counseling celibacy as detachment from the world to gain greater freedom to serve God. There's something about that same spiritual expediency in the Beatitudes of Jesus. They describe lives located between this world and the next with radical virtues to build God's future, which is both here and not yet. Disciples are called to live in the blessedness of that future even if it appears to this world to be a life of poverty, of hunger, mourning, exclusion, even insult, as Luke speaks today. By committing yourself to live as Jesus did, you and I will find richness, satisfaction, laughter, and joy, because the kingdom of God is really already ours. Unlike Matthew's version of the Beatitudes, Luke also adds the opposites, um, the woe-tudes, I suppose you might call them, um, that describe the faith of those who indulge in the world's benefits but lose the kingdom. Luke, linked more closely to Paul, may have had his more cosmopolitan the Greco-Roman audiences in mind rather than the Jewish community so prevalent in Matthew. But the call to a radical life is really the same. And Matthew will sort of balance his list in the same way when he gets to chapter 25 in the parable of the Last Judgment. Today, of course, we communicate, commemorate the life of St. Peter Claver. As current gospel events and current events compel a more accurate history of the, really the horrors of slavery and the destruction of indigenous peoples and the colonization of the Americas, figures like Peter Claver and his predecessor Bartolome de las Casas stand taller for their defense of and their service to millions of those people that were deemed subhuman by their conquerors. They raise consciousness in the worst of times and prompt us to engage the same issues, perhaps, in our own. The brutal world that they witnessed was the economic and social foundation of our own. And their radical claim that black and brown lives matter even echo in history to this day. Effective social change rests really on a conversion of the heart. If it's true that the Chinese ideogram for crisis combines risk and opportunity, then this generation has the chance really to choose between beatitude and woe by addressing some of history's greatest injustices with courage and clarity today. Facing this risk, Paul's warning applies. The time is running out. Seizing this opportunity, you and I have the chance to turn crisis into an enormous leap forward, a leap forward that will move humanity closer to the beloved community, where history and hope must eventually meet.